It's college basketball on the ACC Network. Tonight, the 2017 and 18 season begins. The Western Carolina Catamounts out of the Southern Conference taking on the Clemson Tigers. Hi, friends, with Jim Davis, Pete Gannity with you, a Tiger team looking to improve on last season's run to the NIT. Western Carolina also looking to get better. They won just nine times a year ago. Key players in the ball game, Mark Gosselin, there he is. He returns it a forward for Western Carolina. He does, and he's coming off a, uh, the season, closing the season with a double-double, four straight double-doubles. Gosselin led the Catamounts in rebounds a year ago, nearly seven a game. There's Shelton Mitchell. He's Clemson's returning scoring leader. He is, and he got a lot of those points, Pete, by shooting 45.9% from three-point arc. Mitchell also led the Tigers in assists uh, a year ago, or I should say returns in the assist lead category just under four per game. So the starting lineups for you, and again, one of the newcomers for Western Carolina, a guy they expect to impact them is Mike Amius, a junior collar transfer at forward. As that's Mitchell running it down for the Tigers. Dante Grantham has changed numbers. He's hoping for a change from a year ago when his scoring numbers weren't what they are. Feet inside and the newcomer Donnell finishing for the first basket of the year. Donnell uh, is starting tonight in, instead of... Uh Eli Thomas uh, would normally be in the post. Right. And Eli's been foul prone, Pete, so it may be that uh, coaches... Going to bring him off the bench and see if he's not more effective. Here's Gosselin driving inside and right in front of the basket. The tip in by the returning scoring leader for Western Carolina. Abubakar Mutombo. And early on here, we're tied at two apiece. Tigers trying to play up tempo again this year like they did a year ago. That won't fall for Grantham. And Mutombo gets that rebound. And one of the keys for this Western Carolina team... They're guard-oriented, start three guards, but they're very good rebounding guards. That's the guy who runs the show for them. Devin Peterson, a senior out of Milton, Georgia. Shot clock coming up on 10. Gosselin looking to give it away. And Mutombo, that time soft off the glass. And early lead change as Western Carolina has the 4-2 advantage. Mutombo, that kind of player, he's 6'5", but he can slash inside. Great body control on that, too. Good, nice touch off the glass. Gabe DeVoe driving inside. Amius got a hand on it before it was on its way down. So it'll come down to Western Carolina. Peterson on the drive and the finish. Floater for Devin Peterson and quickly a four-point advantage. Well, they're being aggressive with the ball. They are attacking the basket. One issue the Tigers have in their two preseason games, a win against Division II Augusta, and then a four-point loss in here Sunday against Tennessee. Slow starts offensively, and Brad Brown now really preaching. He wants a change of that beginning tonight. As a stop and pop will go for Marquise Reed. Mitchell may be the leading returning scorer, but Reed has the potential to lead this team in scoring. He's getting close to 1,000 in his career, and he's just a junior. No doubt, and uh, he's capable of putting them up in big, big numbers. Peterson from Gosselin, another runner, no, battling inside Gosselin, out of bounds, back over to Clemson. I think Clemson's going to have to do a great job. They're undersized, no question about it. Western Carolina's longtime head coach Larry Hunter now in his 13th season. Prior head coaching stops at Wittenberg, a Division III school in Ohio, and then at Ohio University. And he is one of the 10 active winningest coaches in the land. Reed from downtown in the corner. No, but fighting in there was Donnell, and he'll go to the line. Donnell's making his presence failed out there very early in this game, Pete. Might be a good move for Coach Brownell. As you may know, Mark Donnell playing his graduate season with Clemson. He played at Michigan his first three years. Brad Brownell, believe it or not, year number eight begins for Brad Brownell at the helm. The Tigers head coach going for his 125th victory at Clemson and his 189th overall this evening as Donnell, who shot 78% last season at Michigan, hits the first. And the very first game that Brad Brownell coached at Clemson back in November of 2010 was against Larry Hunter and Western Carolina. So really? A, How about that? Bit of a reoccurrence is uh, that was 100 and 24 wins ago when that game tipped off as far as the Clemson run goes for Brad Brownell. Amius feeding Peterson, knocked away inside, give credit to Grantham, out ahead, Mitchell! And Amius, a second block here inside of the first five minutes of the opening half. Coach Brownell's uh, looking for basket interference there, but that was the trail official's call, Pete. 
Amy has had just two blocks all of last year playing for North Platte Junior College. That's him with the ball. Donnell defends. Amy drives inside and looks stepped like he on stepped the on the baseline right. out of bounds back over to Clemson. Take another look at the defense by Mike Amius. Ooh, that was pretty close. Almost hit the backboard. If it had hit the backboard first, it would have been a uh, basket interference and the goal would have counted. Shelton Mitchell, he has dealt with some knee issues, had the offseason surgery, and Brad Brownell says, you know what, there are good days and bad. We've got to ease off in practice, but they hope he'll be able to be just about full speed every time he hits the court for a game. Donnell, pretty move, but then losing it. Gosselin with the steal. Western Carolina led early in this one by four. Steger feeding Amius. Lost it, got it back inside, and they're going to whistle the Tigers on the foul. And it'll be Dante Grantham with the first personal in the game. Underway here in 17 and 18 in Little John. Tied early on. on in Little John. Start of the 2017 and 18 season. Western Carolina in battling the Clemson Tigers along with Jim Davis, Pete Yannity back with you and you know we were back and forth over the uh, the first segment there. Let's face it coach it can be a while before you really establish flow in that opening game maybe into the second half. Yeah you got to get your rhythm. The players have to get used to each other of course they've had exhibition games but I love this time of the year Pete because everybody's undefeated. Everybody feels good about themselves. They've been working all summer, been in that weight room, and now they're ready to apply all of that uh, hard work to uh, game game day. Foul on Grantham before the timeout. He is headed to the bench. Tigers have checked in Eli Thomas, who Jim noted. Mark Donnell got the start in place of, and also into the ball game for Clemson. Another one of the young bigs. Amir Sims as two free throws go down for Mike Amius. And a year ago, he shot just 44% from the line. So he's off to a good start. A couple of blocks so far. And they uh, able to drive inside and create some activity on the offensive end. Backing into the basket is Thomas spinning, and he rattles it home. And I think the Tigers' successes this year, he is a huge cornerstone of that. The guy who transferred in last year from Texas A&M was eligible for the second part of the season. No question, Pete. You know, he was actually a top 50 recruit uh, when he signed with Texas A&M. Shows his length, and Amius then got it back. Steger falling the, the deck. That's Thomas scrapping with him. We're going to get a held ball call, I believe. Thomas has got to get more minutes. He, he, he is in foul trouble. He gets on the floor right there. you got to love that when a big man will get on the floor. Western Carolina arrow. 24 on the shot clock. Amius will head to the bench. So will Steger. Darice Parks checking in for Western Carolina along with Charlendas Brooks. Charlendas Brooks went to Burns High in the upstate not far from here. That's Parks who only played 10 games last year before blowing out a knee, but he is a key guy off their bench. They're really happy. They actually have some depth this year, quality depth. They don't feel like they had that last year, and that's a big reason why they only won nine times. Mutombo spinning on DeVoe. The floater, no. And inside battling is the big fellow for the Tigers at Sims. With his first career rebound, and he's fouled. This Clemson coaching staff really high on him here. Uh, he's got a great basketball body. Look at those shoulders. He's got a, a big, big upside. Two team fouls on Western Carolina, one so far on Clemson. Jump in that 1-3-1 one, one half court. Mitchell kicking it. There's Sims. And Drains one, mid-range jumper out of Amir Sims, his first bucket yep. as a collegian. Amir Sims coming to this program highly regarded, rated as high as number 89 by those who do the rankings. He keeps making shots like that. They'll be even higher on him, won't they? Brooks was looking low for Mutombo. Finds him down there, but the double team comes. Good help by Amir Sims. And really another good turnover the by Western side. Carolina on the travel call. And the turnovers now. That's the fourth on Western Carolina. Our officials tonight, Mark Schnur, Bert Smith. And we saw the third one, Jarrell Spearman. Tigers back in front by two. They trailed by as many as four. Gosselin knocked it away, but there's Reed. No look to foul. Oh, counted in his foul. 
What a nice find that time by Marquise Reed on the baseline. Great job, no look pass. Gabe DeVoe is another key to this basketball team. Great left hand finish right there. He and Dante Grantham, the senior leaders on this team, and Gabe DeVoe will head to the line a year ago, the senior out of Shelby, North Carolina. 60% for a Tiger team that had one of the best team free throw shooting percentages in Clemson history, fourth best. At Way up there at 73%, and it's a three-point play for DeVoe, and the biggest lead for either team in the early going. Tigers on a 7-0 run. Yeah, that free throw percentage is helped greatly by a guy named Marquise Reed, who happened to be shooting over 90%. Just into the game, the freshman for Western Carolina, Desmond Johnson, throwing it away, but give Reed credit for the defense that time. Here come the Tigers. Sims coming off the bench after that foul on Grantham, and he's giving him some energy. They're going back to a matchup now. Not the 1-3-1, one, one, but a 2-3 matchup. And it's Brooks coming away with a rebound as Sims was trying to add an early three in his collegiate career to the mid-range two he hit moments ago. Gosselin, he can fire from downtown. And he knocks it down over Thomas, who came out to defend. Mark Gosselin, a lot of good numbers a year ago. 6-7 native of France was 36% beyond the arc. He's playing his best basketball, not of the season, but of his career. As you mentioned, a real good finish, four double-doubles to close the year, and he was a big reason why Western Carolina nearly knocked off the Citadel Bulldogs in the opening round of the Southern Conference Tournament. That would have been a big upset as Thomas goes inside. He'll be able to do that a lot against programs like this as he simply has the length. So, you know, we talked in the open about how hard the players have worked in the weight room. He really, literally has transformed his body. He has lost weight, thinned down, but still got that strength, upper body strength. Gosselin the foul. Fourth on Western Carolina, one so far on the Tigers. Thomas, just 48% a year ago from the line, but he rattles that at 10 times. A.J. Oliver into the game to give Reed a rest. So A.J. Oliver, who is a redshirt freshman out of Daniel High right here in the area. Came in last year in January. Thomas, the native of Dallas, Texas. And two out of two, so a plus right there. And back out to a four-point Clemson advantage. Johnson out of Memphis, Tennessee. They're excited about that freshman point guard, but a dangerous pass that time. And DeVoe on the run out. Probably a good foul right there, but they're going to get Johnson on the reach in, and that'll be his first. And now five on the Western Carolina team here. Just under seven minutes into action. I'll tell you, that's Clemson's, uh, that, that's Clemson's bread and butter, playing that good defense, jumping those passing lanes, creating offense with your defense. And two of our officials discussing the situation. I think they're trying to determine that it was either a shot clock situation as to uh, why wouldn't they reset it if a foul was called, though they didn't reset it. They kept it at 29. So I found that a bit odd, but so it goes. That's Oliver with the ball. Great ball move at Pete. Mitchell left wing, no. Tigers have had a couple of good looks from three, but have not gotten him to go down. We'll go back over to Western Carolina. And Shelton Mitchell and Marquise Reed are guys that are going to get their opportunities as they did a year ago pretty well. And you figure Grantham and DeVoe will be guys. Tigers are also going to count on to do some good work beyond the arc. There's Parks, who is a good scorer. Gosselin hit a three moments ago. Can't get that one, but Brooks keeping it alive for the Catamounts. Johnson. And a whistle away from the ball. You got some bumping and grinding going on inside. And, and Elijah Thomas is first. Wearing number 14, battling the number 41, Charlendas Brooks of Western Carolina, right there in the middle. That's two big bodies banging into each other there, and, and that was a foul that Eli has to avoid. He's got to be able to cut the cutter, not allowed to cut to the basketball like that uh, without fouling. Donnell back in the game as both Brooks and Thomas took a seat in the steal by Mitchell. 
Has the numbers, a nice feed to Sims, and he's fouled on his way to the hoop. What a pretty pass that was by Shelton Mitchell, the transfer from Vanderbilt. Now in his second year playing in the program, we'll take another look. First of all, that's a great job going to get the basketball. He went straight up and took it out of Sims' hand. Mitchell a year ago at 19 steals. In a situation like that, when we're coming down the floor, I always taught my players, it's either passing lane or driving lane. If they're in the passing lane, you drive. If they're in the driving lane, you pass. And he dished it off very well. Amir Sims out of Palmyra, Virginia. Finishes high school career at Blue Ridge High. And he can't get the second one to go either, so it stays a four-point Clemson lead. Tigers have been up by as many as five here in our opening half of play. Parks with a pull-up three. Won't fall. Gosselin will get him coming over the back, and that's a big story right there. Second personal on Mark Gosselin, their leading rebounder a year ago. And now in Western Carolina, that is seven. So great, the job. great job by Sim putting the body on him. And uh, Gosselin went after him, got him in the back. And I did see them about to inbound, and I thought to myself, surely they hadn't changed the rules. It's now a one and one opportunity for the Tigers. And early foul trouble for Gosselin. He, as you saw, headed on over the bench. So here's Sims, 0 for 2 a moment ago. Good looking freshman. They list him at 6'7, 237. He looks a little bit taller and leaner uh, than uh, those two measurements. And he knocks down the front end, he'll shoot the bonus. He's pretty stout. No question, that was a nice touch on that free throw. They were really counting on him to fill some of the void. It'll be tough uh, to fill the void of the departure Jerome Blossom game, but they're hoping he can at least give some of the inside presence, draw some attention. So the biggest lead of the game by the Tigers now out to six. PT got Clyde Trapp in from Columbia, South Carolina, playing for the Tigers. Tigers guard out of Lower Richland. Tumbo, 10 on the shot clock, weaving inside. He scored that way earlier, and he gets another field goal. And that pulls the Catamounts back within four. Yeah, Mutombo's a fine player. I saw him play last year. If the name sounds familiar on Habubakar Mutombo, he's got an uncle named Dikembe. <laughs> and the basket will not count, but we're going to get a foul. Foul is called in number five. And they got Devin Peterson on that. So free throws coming up on the other side of the timeout. Tigers lead in Little John by four. Four-point Clemson lead, 11.32 to go here in the opening half. And Western Carolina in to open up the season. You know, interesting stories for both radio crews for this ball game. Western Carolina, the gentleman talking with the Purple Tie, Gary Ayers, beginning his 33rd season, starting things out. Uh, long ago, calling Western Carolina action. It's Daniel Hooker is color analyst next to him. And there's Tim Bray. Everyone knows about Tim Bray, and he is beginning year number 38 as the color analyst on the Clemson Network. He sits to the left of Don Munson, who's now handling the radio call for uh, Clemson's Network. But Tim Bray has uh, seen himself quite a lot of basketball. He'd probably appreciate the plug that he's written a couple of books with Digger Phelps about basketball and uh, yeah, available at better bookstores everywhere and yeah, probably on Amazon. I've read one of his books. It's called Basketball uh, for Dummies. And he and Digger felt no slight intended, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a really good book. Peterson and Gabe DeVoe knew it. Just the third personal against the Tigers so far. Well, they actually got A.J. Oliver. Gabe DeVoe raised his hand, and it looks like he's the one who <laughs> made the contact. But sometimes they call fouls. You just don't... Uh, you just don't understand why they called it on a particular guy. So yeah. the team fouls now, eight to three. Western in the lead, as you see, right next to there. Nobody the fouls. Nobody fouls. Absolutely. You know. If the players called uh, the the uh, games, the games would be done in about uh, you know an hour. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't have any fouls. I tell you, Matumbo's off to a great start. Three or four from the floor with three rebounds. He is a really good rebounding guard. You get the attention of the Tigers' best. Perimeter defender Mitchell, pretty feed to Peterson who finishes and they'll head to the line. Devin Peterson, a guy a year ago averaged 10.5 points a game. 
led his team in scoring seven times because he can finish at the basket for a guard. Well, I thought Donnell was right there. I mean, if there was any contact at all, it was generated by Peterson. But uh, one of the rules for big guys is don't let a little guy get into your body. And uh, that's, what, that's what Mark did there. Peterson can't get the roll. It was a good free throw shooter a year ago at 76%. Grantham back in after picking up that early foul. In the corner it goes, but Oliver can't get it to fall. Tigers, though, able to reset. Donnell got the start at center, works on Amy. A pretty spin oh, move by the move. former Michigan Wolverine. Liking those Clemson threads, and he puts the Tigers back up by four. Well, that was a beautiful drop step. I don't know how many times Amias saw that playing in the junior college league. He was in out there in the Heartland yeah. in Nebraska. It just seems like uh, Grantham came out of that timeout with a little more of aggressive mindset, which is what Clemson needs from him. Every 10 on the shot clock, that's Parks. Here's Amias trying to do the same to Donnell. No, but inside the battle for the rebound, and we're going to say a shot clock violation. I think Western Carolina will tell you it grazed the rim, but the Tigers will get it back on the turnover. I don't think it hit the rim there. Uh, Western Carolina's arguing. Larry Hunter to our right, the venerable Western Carolina head coach pleading his case to the official who said, that wasn't my side of the court, sorry. Tigers have led by as many as a half a dozen. Chance to match that or build their biggest lead of the game right here. And Grantham with a look from three. Got it. Dante Grantham hit just 33% from downtown a year ago, but he knocks down the tray and indeed a seven-point advantage at 22 to 15. He'll get a lot more of those if he stays aggressive and attacks the paint with it. He does get it. I tell you, Donnell gives Clemson the pick and pop option on the pick and roll, uh, rather than the pick and roll sometimes. That that stretches that defense too. Here's Mutombo off to that good start, and it continues. We're going to say his foot was on the line, I do believe, so they'll call it a two, and it's back to a five-point game. Mutombo, their returning leading score, just under 12 a game last year. Stand himself quite the star here as he's getting close to double figure. That was Amius on the rebound. Here come the Catamounts. To further cut into that Clemson lead. It was a good job, 2 on 2 uh, defense against that fast break. There's Matumbo for three legs. Not going to happen there, but battling inside Peterson. And the guard finishing once again close to the basket. He stands just 6 1, goes 171, but he pulls the Catamounts back within three. Well, once again, that's a, the difference between a good rebounding team and a great rebounding team is how well the guards rebound. And the Tigers, Brad Brownell elects to use the first call timeout here in the opening half of play as Western Carolina's on a 4-0 run and it pulled within three points at 22-19. I can tell you, if, if the team takes the personality of the coach, this Western Carolina team will not go away. I've known Coach Hunter for a long, long time. What a class act he is. Dante Grandin would like to take on the personality of the sophomore season when those were flowing more freely for him and Let's face it, the 6'8 senior out of Martinsburg, West Virginia, is going to need to do plenty of that this season. How about Peterson, though? The senior wants to get his final campaign off on the right foot. No question about it. You know who gets the rebound, don't you, Pete? It's not necessarily the tallest. It's not necessarily the one that jumps the highest, but it's the one that gets there first most of the time. And Peterson got there first. Dante Grantham last year, 7.3 points a game. He was right around 8 his first year, a little bit above 10 his second year, and then last year dropped back down to 7. And just, I think, the thing that bothers uh, him the most is just the inconsistency. They're really looking for more consistency. He looked like he was all world. One game he got an invite, of course, for an NBA tryout during the offseason. He gave that a look. But he uh, is a guy that night in, night out, they're going to count on a dozen, 13 points from him. And... A good number of minutes as well. Out of the timeout, we'll see the Brad Brown Elves drawn up. There's Mitchell driving, but he walked on his way to the basket. Well, and the Tigers will turn it over. Certainly didn't see that. Just the third turnover so far for Clemson. Seven so far in Western Carolina. Yeah. I certainly didn't see that, but those guys in the striping shirts do a good job. They were all over that one. Keep an eye on the player at the top of your screen, Matt Halverson, the freshman, just checked in. For the Catamounts, a really good outside shooter for them. That's Maurice Smith, another one of their backups who just checked into the ball game. Matumbo's getting a much-deserved rest, but I bet he won't be over here long. 
Catamounts have been going deep into the shot clock. Again, the case here. Peterson pulls up on Reed. Off balance, no. Rebound deflected a couple of times and eventually Grantham. Dante driving, contact, bodies fly, out of bounds, back over to the Catamounts. Well, maybe best to no call that one because I don't think anyone could have figured out who needed to get the foul. Take another look. Dante Grantham had good intention. The trouble is he didn't have the numbers. Well, he certainly didn't have position, but and Coach Brownell is letting him know about it. Three-point advantage for Clemson, under eight to go. Davis, Pete Kennedy with you back in Little John. Tigers leading here in the opening half by three. You know, the Southern Conference, where Western Carolina belongs, is known for its slashers, Abubakar Mutombo, one of those. You know, he doesn't look like he's 6'5", but evidently he is because he's got great body control, puts the ball on the floor, rebounds. He's a complete player. Eight points so far for the senior. From Pickering, Ontario. Played at Notre Dame Prep, as we noted earlier. The last name sounds familiar. It is Dikembe Matumbo, the great big man in college and NBA for so many years, is his uncle. Catamounts in this game at an early four-point lead, trying to get as close as they've been in a while. Tigers have led by as many as seven so far. Shot clock down to three, so Gosselin steps out. And the second time that the buzzer goes off, that time, though, it'll simply be a turnover as DeVoe got it, but he loses it. Gosselin ahead to Peterson. Only Mitchell will beat. Daniel head of the line. Boy, he landed awkwardly to Devin Peterson, but I think he's okay. Gabe DeVoe charged with a foul. Yeah, I kind of got him with his legs there and got him off balance. And uh, Anyway, he's going to the line. Peterson's going to the line for two. There's six seniors on this basketball team for Western Carolina, Pete, and these two guards, with Tumble and Peterson, uh, are two of them. So uh, they've got great leadership out there from the guard spots. They endured a grinder of a season last year. They started three and seven, would win just six more times the rest of the way. Uh, Larry Hunter was uh, beside himself with how unsuccessful his team was last year. It'll be one out of two for Peterson, and they're back with him a couple. But they really uh, got an infusion, some new faces. Some guys who could have returned did not, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing, if you know what I mean. And right. Here they are. Anxious for the fresh start. DeVoe takes the lid off for the Tigers. Had they scoreless for a while. Our former baseball coach at Clemson, uh, Coach Bill Wilhelm, used to say it's addition by subtraction, Coach. A lot of times that is the key. Back out to a five-point Clemson advantage. The Tigers trying for their 251st victory all time against a Southern Conference team. Peterson leaving it short. Give the Clemson defense credit for that. All right. Gives to Mitchell. Marquise Reed. Kind of could easily be the leading scorer for this Tiger team, and he goes inside. He'll have a chance to head of the line on the ninth team foul against Western Carolina. Got it. Take a look at Gabe DeVoe and what he can do from long range. That's a great job of stepping into the pass, meeting the pass. That's what we call the jab and J, Pete. Just very quickly, good quick release. Matt Halverson, the freshman who checked in moments ago, gets his first collegiate foul. Nine now on Western Carolina. And Marquise Reed, who last season, come much better than him from the line. 91%. He hit 96 of 106 attempts. He was in that top 50 chart in the nation all year long. You know, I think he made his last 19 free throws to close the season last year. So he's on a streak. Oh, my God. Wow, I jinxed we jinxed him. him. <laughs> How do you like that? I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I was about to say two out of two for the senior or the junior out of Landover, Maryland, but it's a six-point Clemson lead. We thought it was going to be seven. Amius back in there in the corner. Parks not going to happen. And the rebound taken down by Mitchell. Here come the Tigers again looking to push the tempo. A little spin move inside. No, but Thomas with the one-hander. This crowd's going crazy right now. We need that out of Eli. Eli Thomas, a great putback. Parks able to push it over to his teammate, Mutombo. Bowen Reed did a great job double teaming right there. Anytime you turn your back with that reverse spin move out on the floor. And a backdoor denied by Thomas. 
feeds ahead to Mitchell. Good recovery by the Catamounts defense. Tigers have built their biggest lead of the half. Little pull up by Reed. No, and there's Gosling with it. And Western, a team not afraid to try to get up and down the floor either. They've got some guys who can move too. So the up-tempo that Clemson wants to play is kind of in Western Carolina's wheel. Right. Very athletic team. Halverson, the good shooter. Almost got that one to go no. Battle inside for the rebound. And they will say Grantham was last to touch it, knocking it away from Amius. Take a look at what Eli yeah, Thomas can do for you inside. No question. That's a great spin move by Shelton. And there he was. Amos has got to put a body on him outside the arc. Thomas, 58% from the field a year ago. Even the Tigers coming back in that category. Amos wanted to give it away. Instead, the elbow jumper won't go. And Amir Sims, the freshman, pulls down the rebound. So Clemson a chance to build further on this biggest lead of the game so far at eight points. Good job on the hard hedge right there on the pick on the ball. Mitchell looking inside. Good job denying by Honor Seeger down low. Ten of a shot clock. And inside, Western Carolina wants the travel call. They'll get it. As Thomas lost his footing. And the Tigers turn it over again. So Tigers starting to catch up to the Catamounts in that category. Six times, Clemson's given it up. Western with eight turnovers so far. That's a great job by the bow feeding the post. Getting to get in there to the big guy. Active hands by yeah. Reed. Whoa, what Good a great job recovery. by Marquise to take it away. Feeding ahead to Vo, but knocked away that time by Parks. And Steger has it. So good recovery defense by Derese Parks, who's happy just to be playing. He had a serious knee injury. They weren't sure he'd be able to come back from it to the extent he'd be able to return to action. We go back to that theory uh, on the fast break right there. Passing lane, driving lane. And he was in the passing lane, and he passed it anyway. Sims on the rebound. Feeding ahead, Reed, a lane to the hoop, and in, and he's fouled. Steger got him coming by, Marquise Reed, a great job to finish for the Tiger, who will head back to the line and make amends for that rare miss moments ago. Tigers have built a double-figure lead, 30-20, to 20, Clemson up on Western Carolina, the season opener here in Little John. Scoring run to build that 10-point lead. Western Carolina hasn't scored in three minutes and 20 seconds. Part of this run, the big guy inside, Eli Thomas. You know, Pete, uh, Coach Brownell knows what he's doing, obviously. Bringing Elijah Thomas off the bench and starting Mark Brownell. Because he's come in and played inspired basketball. He's got six points. Two for two from the field, two for two from the free throw line. Thomas shares Clemson high scoring honors so far with Gabe DeVoe. Each has a half a dozen. Marquise Reed will head of the line, try to convert the three-point play. And now he has six in the game. And he's two out of three from the line. And it'll be a rare night that Marquise Reed isn't a perfect uh, free-throw shooter. He's so good from there. He is good. And the lead grows to 11. Tigers have turned up the defense near midcourt. And that time, it is Reed forcing the turnover by Parks. That's Brad Brownell defense right there. Really pressuring at the point of the ball. Doing a good job denying one pass away. Mitchell nearly four assists a game a year ago. And he'll be the Tigers' main distributor. Here's Reed driving inside the defense by Amius. And they're going to get him with his second personal foul. You know, that's a case where I don't think Amos jumped out there and hedged as hard as Coach Hunter teaches him. He, he's new to the program. So, uh, he, you know, he's obviously going to have to learn uh, a few things there. But uh, that was one case where he didn't jump out there like he should. Tigers in the double bonus. This will be a two-shot foul either way. And now Reed, seven-point night so far after he averaged even 10 a game for the Tigers last season. We noted he's getting close to 1,000 in his career. He starts the season with 858. And Keep in mind, he played at Robert Morris, where he was the Northeast Conference Freshman of the Year. Transferred down here at a fine season a year ago for Clemson in more of a support role. Now he's going to be a big part of the show, and he's got a chance to get to that 1,000-point mark here uh, by the end of November, if not early December. And on the floor and hung up is Mutombo, who promptly calls a timeout. First one used by Western Carolina. So each team has three timeouts remaining. 
in the ball game. A 13-point Clemson advantage. Once and Larry again. Hunter in Western Carolina yes. trying to finally get off the schneid against the Tigers. Clemson 11-0 all-time against number 11, Dikembe Mutombo, and Western. Once again, that's great pressure defense. Uh, pressure at the point of the ball, but gave the vote this time. Uh, and that, that's the way Coach Brownell wants to do. He's hung his hat on defense during his career here, and uh, it looks like they're, they had a down year defensively last year, but it looks like they're on their way back. And Western Carolina team that wasn't typical for them. Larry Hunter usually very good defensive teams. He plays an up-tempo offense. They gave up over 73 points a game a year ago, and that is not typical for a guy who is in his 38th year as a head coach of third stop and has done really good work at Western, has 689 career wins, so he will get to that very cherished threshold of 700 victories, likely at some point this season. You've got to think this is going to be better than a nine-win team. Down the shot clock, out of that timeout. They look low for Amias, but Thomas hasn't bottled up. Gosselin looking back door. Shot clock down to two. Matumbo doesn't realize it. Another shot clock violation by Western Carolina. Officially, that's their second, although they did hoist an air ball. That led to the buzzer going off. And you see the good job by Gabe DeVoe that time. Yeah, and to be honest with you, Matumbo tried to post DeVoe up, and DeVoe's as big and strong as he is. So uh, great job on post defense by a guard. Mitchell, the Tigers saw Western Carolina whittle the lead down to two at 22 to 20. Tigers, though, on an 11-0 run, looking to continue that. That amounts now of 11 turnovers so far in this opening half. A year ago, their number was 16 a game. We've got a foul, and that one's going to go on Peterson, and that'll be his second. It's hard to say. I think he was inside the arc there, Pete, so... Uh... And he was. So two free throws for Mitchell. Tigers still with just five team fouls. Western long ago reached the double digit mark in fouls. And Shelton Mitchell, who a year ago was an 80% free throw shooter, part of that good overall team average. Two out of two for the Clemson Junior out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. People have asked me, uh, how, do you, how do you have such good free throw shooters? And I said, you recruit them. <laughs> we'll get Donnell on the block that time. And that'll be the second on the Tiger Rad student out of Monclova, Ohio. So we will see Malik William check in for the first time. A freshman as Donnell couldn't believe the call. There's 6'8", 226 pounder. Orlando, Florida is the first academy. Had the 15-point lead, their biggest of the night. And Gosselin won't change that. And going up high for the rebound, Grant. Dante drives inside, off balance, gets it a go, and he'll head to the line. This is what Grantham is capable of. He handles the ball very well for a six foot eight. Got a nice touch there, and he did get bumped with the body. Knocked him a little bit off balance, but still finished. And a three point play for Dante Grantham. He knocked down that tray earlier. So Grantham now with solid first half. Six points so far for him. And inside, reach and foul be called. Let's see. I think they're going to get Malik William. That'll be the first foul of his collegiate career. That is now seven on Clemson. So a one and one opportunity for the Catamounts. Mike Amius. It was two out of two so far from the line. Catamounts have been there five times. They're three out of five in the game. Tigers have already shot 18 free throws and are 14 out of 18. And Amius the miss. So Clemson with the 18-point lead as we approach halftime. A chance to be up by 20 at the break. And the drive by Mitchell will again get him for dragging his foot and another turnover for the Tigers. 
That's been a strength for Clemson. With all these guards, one of the things that come with that is their ability to handle the ball, low turnovers, and uh, but they've, they've had some turnovers here in the first half. I'm sure that doesn't please Coach Brown out. Mitchell will get a breather for the remainder of the half. And again, anytime they can get him rest because he's still coming all the way back from the knee surgery, they feel good about that. You see the turnovers and things have even up just about in that category. Western with three now. Here's Brooks backing into the freshman Williams, the senior out of Burns High over near Spartanburg. No battle inside, and Grantham comes away with it. Grantham ahead, Oliver now DeVoe open from the wing, and he knew it when it left his hands and gave DeVoe. Another three made here in the opening half of play, and the senior out of Shelby DeVoe able to build in his point total so far. A.J. Oliver making the extra pass there, Pete. DeVoe leads the way with nine. Tigers have built the lead to 21. Reverse inside by Gosselin. First basket in a long time since Western had cut it to a 22 to 20 game. And that ends a Tiger run of 19-0. Tigers taking their time, setting up in the half court. And Grantham able to knock it down with a man in his face and a lengthy one at that. I tell you, when Dante gives a great effort on the defensive end, it seems to inspire him on the offensive end as well. Two seniors who've been front and center with a lot of the preseason interviews for the Tigers. DeVoe and Grantham lead the way with nine points apiece here in the first half. Thompson building its biggest lead of the half. Matumbo, something to say about that. The air ball. Shot That's clock right. is off. This thing was a tight game for the first 13 minutes or so, but yeah. Clemson's turned that completely their way and looking to lead by should lead by more than 20 going into the break here you can, you can attribute that to the defensive end of the floor and their intensity down there and a good hand for the tiger team as they head to the locker room western carolina will head to halftime seeking answers they were in a two-point game at 22 to 20 but the tigers closed the half on a 22 to 2 run. Halftime here at Little John. We're back in a moment. Tigers rolling on Western. Getting ready for our second half here at Little John Coliseum with Jim Davis, Pete Hannity back with you. Tigers with the 22 point advantage. Although Western Carolina hung around for the first 12 minutes or so of that opening half. And let's take a look at the first half of action. And let's face it, it was a Catamount team that I think maybe uh, opened some eyes in this arena with their defense in the early going. Mike Amius, their newcomer from North Platte Junior College. And there's one of their returnees, a guy who picked up the scoring for him last year, Mark Gosselin from the outside. But Amius and Cruz set the tone early. Bubakar Matumbo on his way to a solid first half in which he had eight points to lead them. Matumbo's just got a great feel for the game. Scores inside, scores outside, great rebound, complete player. Catamounts build an early four-point lead, doing some good work around the basket. We really saw that go away as the first half went on. In fact, that nice. reversed by Gosselin nice. ended a nearly nine-minute drought in which they went without a field goal as the Tigers built the big lead. Clemson started out, and how about Mark Donnell, new to the program for Michigan, the first bucket of the year is by the transfer. Early on, you know, Clemson fell behind by four, but then built a quick five-point lead, and Eli Thomas didn't get the start. You think that might have been the best thing, though, for him? I think Coach Brownell uh, has been thinking about that move for a while, and uh, it obviously is turning out very well. Donnell showing you a drop step right there. Great job right there with that move. That's Tigers saw that early five-point lead go away, but then they started getting going beyond the arc. You saw the senior Dante Grantham. There's Gabe DeVoe, those two leading the way in scoring nine points apiece. Tigers four out of eight from beyond the arc and also doing good work in the paint as the half continues. I'll tell you, uh, Elijah Thomas has done a, he's had a solid, solid half of basketball. Uh, and, you know, they've just done a great job sharing the basketball and putting the ball on the floor right there by Grantham. Good finish and drawing the foul. Dante Grantham, solid finish for the first half. So now in each huddle, Brad Brownell's got a team up by 22. And obviously he's telling the guys, let's keep making it happen defensively. 
And obviously for Larry Hunter, you're looking up at a deficit against an ACC team. You've got a little bit of foul trouble. Nothing overwhelming, but just enough to keep you honest. And no doubt Western Carolina, they've got to be trying to take this in increments and maybe whittle off a little bit every five minutes. You know, I always talk my, try to tell my team it was, it's great if you can make more free throws than the opponent's attempt. Uh, Clemson is 14 for 18, and Western Carolina is 3 for 6. So uh, they're making it happen with that stat here tonight. I think you and I have talked about on a telecast with that stat. Often when you go to Cameron Indoor Stadium, the home team usually ends up with more made than the other <laughs> attempts. In men's games, at least. I don't yeah, know that, there's women. another school up in North Carolina that that happens quite often, too, I think. Yeah, quick turnover early on by the Tigers, who in the opening half had just eight. And a year ago, Clemson gave it up just under 11 times a game. And for an up-tempo team, that's a pretty good number, taking care of the basketball. Yeah. I like Grantham's uh, enthusiasm. He's out there encouraging his teammates. and uh, That senior leadership is important. Mutombo defended by DeVoe who went down is holding his left knee as Mutombo finishes at the basket. That does not look good right out oh. in front of us. Gabe DeVoe. Now he's going to get up and try to put some weight on as he hobbles off the court. And hopefully that was just a deal where he had a bit of a twist and nothing worse. Oh, it's a stinger, yeah. A.J. Oliver checks in. So Western Carolina gets the first basket of the second half and Matumbo the first player on either side in the double figures with 10 points so far. Shelton Mitchell will run the point this year. Of course Avery Holmes, another guy who had a couple of good years in the Clemson uniform has moved on but you wonder how much that might impact Mitchell's scoring. Here's Grantham inside. Contact is made. No, it's going to be a turnover as they'll call him on the offensive foul. I thought they were going to get Western Carolina on the block. Take another look. And good job drawing the charge by Amius. So two fouls on Dante Grantham. And that's the first foul on either side here in our second half of play. You mentioned Avery Holmes. Uh, actually, his brother-in-law is a member of the Western Carolina coaching staff. Yeah. Coach Freeman, Willie Freeman. Tombo. Peterson now. And Amius inside on Thomas. He tries a little bit of a spin move. Nothing happening against the 6'9", 230-pounder Thomas. Tigers return the other way. Feed inside. Grantham and a general throwdown and a pretty feed from Shelton Mitchell. That was a huge job by Elijah Thomas. Right there, hand straight up. That's what he has to do to avoid foul trouble. And it got the fast break started. Tigers back up to the margin they had at halftime, 22 points. Amius lost it. Push ahead by Oliver to Mitchell. Good job trying to recover with Steger, but I think they're going to get him on the foul. Dante Grantham, a guy who's going to have to make it happen on the offensive end, and here we see him finish inside. He's the first Tiger in double figures with 11 points so far in the game. Here's it strong to the basket off a wonderful assist by uh, Shelton Mitchell. So Mitchell will go to the line. I'm sorry, Pete. That, that once again was generated by a good play by Elijah Thomas on the defensive end. Good defense generates offense on a lot of occasions. Mitchell, very solid free throw shooter now. Three out of three in the contest. Four out of four for Mitchell. And the Tigers build their biggest lead of the night. 24 points. Mitchell defending the combo. Shelton gives up a few inches, but certainly has the quickness. Yeah, that was a great job of defending him, too. Great job of... Steger driving, and they'll get A.J. Oliver on the reach-in. That'll be the second on the redshirt freshman from here in Clemson. A.J. Oliver's only a freshman now, but uh, he knows how to play defense. That's a pretty good job right there by a young freshman. Oliver will head to the bench. Two team fouls now to start the second half of the Tigers. And Brad Brownell going to do some coaching over there. And Tumbo on Grantham. Tip by Thomas. And it comes down to Scott Sh Spencer, who missed uh, most of last season due to a back injury. But he's now in there for the first time. And Thomas on the second effort. Good work inside by Elijah Thomas. He's been enforcing in the paint. Big guy's got to learn to keep it off the floor, though. Go straight up. 
Eight points so far for Thomas, who averaged seven and a half a year ago when he started playing after the first semester. Look at Steger with the reverse layup, and Anno Steger, the sophomore out of the Columbus, Ohio area, with the bucket for Western Carolina. Grantham open three, got it. Rattling at home, and Dante Grantham scoring like they need him to. Now 14 in the game. And he drains another three-pointer from beyond the arc so far. He has been able to hit three of those in three attempts. And we've got a whistle, and we're going to get Thomas on the bump. And Elijah Thomas with his second, and here in the second half, three on the Tigers and one so far on the Catamounts. Peterson feeding. Grantham got a hand on it. Thomas ahead to Mitchell. Gosselin recovering on the defense. No whistle there. Here's Steger. Moving in on Thomas. Bodies fly. Offensive foul. And Elijah Thomas draws the charge. That'll be a second quick one on Otto Steger. you got to love that. When a big man will step in there and take a charge, that is something special. They have a long way to fall, Pete, basically. That's right. 6-9 going down is a lot <laughs> different than 5-11. There's a Steger now adding to his foul count. That is actually his fourth foul. Look at that inside. Pretty nice work. Shelton Mitchell going down the lane. Shelton Mitchell is making great decisions for this basketball team. He's got about six assists now, and... Uh, Really doing a good job running the show. Gosselin the answer for the Catamounts, but the Tigers' lead remains near 30 here. In the early stages of the second half, Clemson was up by 22 at the break. That's a Western team that hung around in the first 12 or 13 minutes of this game. Mitchell with Peterson defending. Reed goes inside, changing hands in the air with a right pass Amiens and Marquise Reed with the bucket. Now a 10-point game from Marquise Reed, so he and Grantham double-figure scores. Dante was 14. Western opening on an ACC floor. They'll play in Chapel Hill later this year. Next up for them is a trip on Monday night to Cincinnati, which won decisively earlier today. They're a top-15 team. Tough schedule for Larry Hunter and company. There's Grantham going to the hole. Whistle. And Brad Brownell can't believe the call as we're going to get a follow foul on Dante Grantham. Take a timeout. Tigers rolling here in Little John. Tigers lead 57 to 28 early on here in the second half. Clemson building on the 22 point halftime advantage. One of the reasons they've developed this huge lead, they're knocking down the trees. Dante Grantham having a big night. Great catch and shoot. Great catch and shoot. They're finding the open man. That's an extra pass for the bow. And then here's the bow again. He and uh, he and Grantham are wearing it out. There's the last one that just before the half, or just before the last timeout. Dante How important just, is it to shoot in rhythm when you're trying a three? No question. The pass is, leads to the, a good pass leads to a good shot. Yeah. And Clemson's passing has been really, really good. Grantham three out of three from beyond the arc. Tigers five out of nine as a team. We saw Grantham on the bench. He just picked up his third foul on the Tigers fourth here in the second half. There's Reed inside trying for the steal. He led the Tigers with 46 a year ago, but he'll be called for the reach in. And just the first on Marquise Reed, but now five on Clemson. Amius off the inbound, feeds underneath Mutumbo and a good recovery defense that time by Amir Sims, the Tigers freshman with the rejection. Reed for Thomas. Ooh, and Eli, I think they're going to get him on the walk. He did drag the back foot. Once again, he should just, he should have just left the floor and gone with it. We're just putting about, it on the floor. Talk about three pointers in a game involving Western Carolina it was back in November of 1980 that college basketball's first made three-pointer was by a catamount. Ronnie Carr and almost on cue, Darius Parks of Western Carolina hits the three. That's been a rare make from long range for them. 
And Brad Brownell likes to call a timeout. We'll talk more about the intricacies of that three-point story for the Catamounts. Tigers up 57-31. Timeout on the court. 26-point Clemson lead on Western Carolina. Tigers getting it done on both ends of the floor. We showed you the threes moments ago. How about Amir Sims, the youngster, getting in there on the block? And then the rebound by Elijah, and they're off to the races. Western Carolina able to knock down a tray, but those have been few and far between for the Catamounts in the ball game. That was just their second made three. And we were talking about how Western Carolina is in three-point shooting lore. It was November of 1980, Ronnie Carr and Cullowee against Middle Tennessee. There's Thomas inside, and a foul go against Amius. And they had actually played the night before at Georgia Tech and won at Western Carolina, one of their few wins ever against an ACC team. As Amius picks up his third, and we'll see Thomas go to the line on a nice spin move inside. And so they go home the next night, and that was the year the NCAA had the Southern Conference experiment with a three-point shot. They used oh, okay. Southern Conference to experiment with a three, and in the next year they would use the Sun Belt to experiment with a 45-second shot clock. And Western Carolina was supposed to play that game against Middle Tennessee at 7.30. But they wanted to make history, so they got Middle Tennessee to agree to move the tip time to 7 o'clock because Chattanooga, a Southern Conference member, was playing a game at 7.30 that night. So they wanted to have a half an hour jump to have a chance. And Ronnie Carr that year had a great year scoring, but he ended up only making eight threes the entire season. Now, they only used a three-point shot when they were playing at home or in another Southern Conference venue, but that was a league back then that right. you still played roughly, what, 16 league games, and you played a bunch more at home. But uh, first ever three-pointer made in the college game, November 29th, 1980, Ronnie Carr, for Western Carolina against Middle Tennessee. Tigers in control here. Catamounts, as we said, just trying to whittle away. Goslin, Tigers doing a nice job containing him. Here's Amius in the junior college transfer in his first game in a Catamount uniform. Able to work inside, and he finishes well. He was 70% last year at North Platte Junior College in Nebraska, 68% in his two seasons there. Now he's going to out quick a lot of big men, Pete. That's for sure. He is quick. Grantham on the bench for the Tigers with three fouls. So guys like Thomas trying to pick up the score and slack. And Elijah Thomas now a very solid start to his campaign. As he's a third Tiger to get to double figures, he now has 11 in the contest. Working low block, Amius able to save it. So plenty of time for Gosselin. Now Amius as Larry Hunter elects to pound inside. And a good finish by the 6'7", 210 pounder originally from... Lake Worth, Florida. Over the bigger Elijah Thomas, and he was in great defensive position, and he just elevated right over the top of him. Scott Spencer, number 22, he came in when Gabe DeVoe left earlier. Looking like he might have hurt his knee, and we don't have a report of his situation. There's Spencer delivering just six games played last year before a back injury took him out for the rest of the season. The native of Virginia, his first field goal of the season. Parks rejected by Thomas, but Parks got it back. Nice shot by Elijah. Inside, another rejection, and then off the face and chest of Amius. Eli Thomas showing you the defensive reach. I think Clyde Trapp was waiting on a high post screen there, middle ball screen, and uh, he should have pushed it because they had the numbers. Scott Spencer off the crossover, hits the two. Larry Hunter wants to talk about it with his team. He has seen the Tigers build the lead back out to 29-64 to 35. Tigers starting to add up the blocks on the night. And you see Elijah Thomas go up with a rejection there and then look at him inside. All body. Indeed, Thomas and the Tigers rolling along here in Little Jump. Western Carolina was starting to whittle a little bit closer. Tigers pretty much had this one in hand since about the five-minute mark of the opening half. And Clemson building that lead. Larry Hunter using the timeout to talk about him. He's gone with some of his young guys, like the one who just took the inbound. Desmond Johnson, a freshman out of Memphis. 
Clemson just on fire from the floor and the free throw line. And Tigers as a team really getting it done. 64% beyond on field goal tries and beyond the arc at 56% so far in the game. Hubie Brown told me years ago in the game of basketball, shooting overcomes a multitude of sins. Was he wearing a leisure suit and did he keep it that uh, that family friendly? Because as you may know about Hubie Brown, he came out of the uh, 1970s era, particularly his days with the Hawks when he wore a lot of polyester. And more times than not, what he said, either uh, coaching his team or in general, could not be repeated uh, to most audiences. <laughs> The venerable longtime NBA coach Hubie Brown. And then later, of course, became a star on TV. Imagine that. Yeah. Oliver, the freshman, on another freshman, Halverson. And Halverson will be called for the reach in. Let's see if they say it was in the act of shooting. No doubt. So the second on Halverson, now four on the Catamounts, and five so far in Clemson. A.J. Oliver, of course, mom and dad both played basketball at Virginia, and his mom, Audra Smith, is the women's head coach for the Tigers. And they won today over Kennesaw State. They had a game earlier this morning, knocked off the Owls, so congrats to Tiger women for getting off to a 1-0 start in the campaign. A.J. Oliver, 6'5", 190. Showing good form at the free throw line. Lead grows above 30 at 31. Biggest so far the ball game. Halverson, that's what he does. Fires from long range, can't get it to go. Rebound coming down to trap. And let's see, we've got a ball knocked out of bounds apparently by Western Carolina's yeah. Johnson. Tigers return home on Sunday, 2 p.m. against the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. As we told you, this Western Carolina team heads to Cincinnati for a Monday night game against Mick Cronin's top 15 Bearcats. Sims, little fadeaway, couldn't get it to go. Nice flying in, hustle that time, though, by the Tigers' Malik William, but unable to finish is Oliver, and will go the other way. So a bunch of freshmen out there for each team. Drive to the basket, and Maurice Smith can't get it to go, but he'll head to the line, and that'll be a foul against Amir Sims. And the first on the Clemson freshman out of the state of Virginia. Another, another good job defending, but uh, got him with a foul there. Well, Sims is just a great back, upper body, just big, strong kid. Very athletic. Very similar build, maybe not as bulky as one Trevor Booker when he came to the program a little over a decade ago. Good comparison. And that one will go down. So one out of two for Smith. 30-point game. Told the Tigers going for their 251st win all time against the Southern Conference. A 250 and 96 record against the conference for which Clemson once belonged. And now they were going for the jam on the feed into William, but he'll head to the line instead. Malik William missed the dunk, but that was a great pass by. Here we go with the, the replay. Great pass over the top. He might have gotten uh, slapped on the arm right there. Nice feed by Amir Sims. Nice idea. And William, who's... I'll tell you, Pete, we haven't talked much about Clyde Trapp, but, uh, and he hasn't taken a shot yet, but I'm impressed with his upper body strength. He makes great, great passes with a lot of mustard on it. And uh, he, he's running the show for this... Uh, second group on the floor right now doing a great job. William hitting the first two free throw tries of his career. A guy who Brad Brownell says wasn't dazzled by the bright lights in the game against Tennessee the other day and has had some good practices during the preseason. So off the Western Carolina turnover, Catamounts are going to show some pressure on the inbound. Clemson's lead, it's biggest of the night at 32 points. Let 
You like the way Sims puts the ball on the floor. I've watched him practice a time or two, and I haven't seen that out of Sims, so it's really impressive what he's doing tonight. Cramp inside his fellow number zero, Smith. <laughs> Got a hand on it. Before that, he was fouled by Johnson. That'll be the third on the freshman point guard. So Clyde Trapp will head to the line at a lower Richland High School. Really rich basketball tradition for that Columbia area school. Trapp rated as the number four player in South Carolina. His AAU coach was a guy who did some good work in a Clemson uniform, Edward Scott. Coached him in AAU, so. Ed Scott, Hall of Famer. Had to make uh, Ed Scott proud when he chose to come to Clemson. Ed wouldn't influence him at all, would he? I don't know. <laughs> Two out of two for Trapp right there, so he makes his first two collegiate free throw attempts, and this Tiger team having a good night from the line. Desmond Johnson is quick as a hiccup, pick. Really is out of basketball, Rich Memphis, Tennessee, and you can tell he's going to be a really good floor leader for this team. It's Peterson's job for this year, but Johnson is their future, and he'll head to the line. Great job, reverse the basketball, reverse spin, throws it up on the glass a little hard, but it gets knocked on his uh, on the floor, and he steps up there for two freebies. Clemson's 23 out of 28 from the free throw line tonight. This will be just the ninth Western Carolina attempt, and Johnson, his first collegiate free throw try, is no good. to start for him. And again, on the floor right now, you've got Sims giving it to Trap with Oliver out there. William just set the screen. He's also a freshman. And a long one on the way, no. And Spencer, second year of the program, but missed most of last year. It's essentially like he's a freshman. The Tigers young out there right now. Yellow Ojai just into the ball game and gets his own rebound. Here's Steger back out there with four fouls. Battle inside, and eventually Spencer comes away with it. Ooh, Sims again. Nice oh. find. William, the finish inside. That Boy, Amir Sims wants to play point guard. That was a better catch than it was a pass now. I'm telling you, he did a great job catching that ball and finishing. He's starting to look like Gianni Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> The Greek freak who's granted 6-9 in playing point, but at 6-7, Sims distributing nicely. One from the wing is going to go down for Arno Steger. Playing with those four fouls and able to add to his point total with his first three of the game. And we'll get Johnson on the reach in, and that'll take us to an official timeout. So these kids are getting plenty of minutes, and Amir Sims, big part of the future of this Tiger program. Malik William, likewise. 20 finishing on the feed from 25. Tigers up big here in Little John. Here in Little John, Tigers rolling. That is one of the Western Carolina assistants. And with Willie Freeman, Brigham Wagner, and Anquan McCollum, Larry Hunter's staff are all former Western Carolina players, which is pretty neat. You noted earlier in our telecast that Willie Freeman is related to Avery Holmes. He is his brother-in-law, may have also coached him. That guy right there, and Paul McCollum, was part of the Western Carolina team in 1996 out in Albuquerque that almost pulled off the first ever 16-1 upset in the NCAA tourney against Purdue. Purdue had the lead by 273-71. Western had a great look to win it for three, and one of the best shooters in the country from three-point range couldn't knock it down, and or else McCollum and crew would have gotten the win. And who was coaching that team? That was a guy named Phil Hopkins, who was from the upstate, went to Wren. They, Benny Dees had built their program. Hopkins took over in his first year. They win the conference, get to the NCAA tourney. And who was waiting in the tunnel? Rick Barnes and the Clemson Tigers, because Clemson and Georgia played in the game right after Western Carolina and Purdue. And what is Phil Hopkins person. doing now? I really have no idea. I know that he got married right after that because he proposed to his fiance, his then his girlfriend, right after the win in Greensboro in the Southern Conference Tournament. Phil Hopkins is coaching at Walhalla Middle School and loving every minute. Of it. I would hope so. What a prince of a guy. 
really good man and uh, again a guy with ties to the upstate of South Carolina but also to the Western Carolina program and Steger will head of the line as Spencer on the bump. Ono Steger a year ago was 66 percent from the free throw line and he hits the first of two. His claim to fame, among other things, is he went to the same high school as one Jack Nicholas. Really? Upper Arlington in Ohio. So one would suppose at one point in his life he's held a nine iron. <laughs> and one out of two that time with a rebound pulled down by Malik William. And William has a look and knocks down a mid-range jumper. The lost art of the mid-range jumper, but we've seen a couple out of the well, we Tigers have. tonight. And a quick catch and shoot by a guy they really like the upside of. Matt Halverson, the freshman, finished off his high school career at a really good program, Christ School in Asheville, and he was his conference's player of the year as a senior. And that Trey makes it a 74-43 game. I'm really impressed with how Clemson passes the basketball. Drive inside and trap unable to get it to fall. And Smith coming down with a rebound. And they're going to have to move the ball really well as the offense they are. I mean, whereas Blossom game would draw the attention of other defenses, this is a, a team that is going to have to have a lot of different guys step up to join someone like Grantham or Reed in the scoring category. Good defensive step that stop that time by the Tigers. Good news for the Tigers. We see Gabe DeVoe coming over the scoring table to check back in. Drive inside. Nothing doing that time for Oliver. And now the rebound eventually by Adam Sled of Western Carolina. Halverson catches, shoots. And he misses for a second straight try. I tell you, the last couple of years, Clemson has been... Much, much better offensively, averaging 74 points a game. And this right on 74 right now with six minutes to go in this game. Spencer. And there's William. Baseline jumper. That's not going to fall. And Steger with the rebound. Halverson. And battle for the rebound. Won by the Tigers, although they're going to say Oliver. Stepped out of bounds. So Gabe DeVoe about to check in, and this is good news because he went down in front of us earlier in this half, and he was wincing in pain, grabbing his left knee, which has a brace on it. But he is happy to return. Just over seven points a game a year ago. Got off to a good start in the opening half tonight, and there's nine so far in the contest, including two out of three from beyond the arc. And he comes back in with his shirt tail out, and the official quickly puts that shirt tail back in. So... Uh but I'm glad to see him moving like that, Pete. That was scary. Johnson up and under can finish. And trap on the run out. Feeding DeVoe who finishes. Showing a little bit of wincing of pain as he came down from that. But a double figure night to start out his senior campaign for Gabe DeVoe. He talked about how excited he was for his final season opener. Maurice Smith answering on the other end. And it's out. Once again, cut back down to a 30-point Clemson advantage. Clemson really needs DeVoe. He may be their best perimeter defender. Drive inside, and the foul on the reach in. For Weston, nice feed right there, too, from Trapp, and a good finish by really DeVoe. I'm impressed with these young players. Brad Brennell has a symbol here. So that is going to be a foul out situation for Desmond Johnson as he picks up his fifth so his debut in a Western Carolina uniform obviously not what he wanted he's replaced by Jason McMillan and Clyde Trapp at the line he able to hit the first of a couple of free throws each team has 18 fouls Dylan Oljai checks in. That's Adam Sled. I may have identified him earlier as Oljai. He played here these last five minutes or so, but now he's out on Oljai. Another one of their big men is in. But to give you an idea as to how the depth has changed for Western Carolina this year, Sled started most of their games at center, and now he's about the third or fourth big man off the bench for that. Yeah, I talked with Coach Hunter last year, and he was really high on Adam Sled. 
So I hope he can grow and with some experience around him. He played way too many minutes last year, so it was kind of a, it maybe stunted his growth, if you will. They expected too much out of him. They had to count on him too much. And Travel will go against Maurice Smith and another turnover by Western Carolina. And that's now 17 in the ball game for them. A year ago, the Tigers forced just under 14 turnovers a game. Really impressed with Mark Donnell uh, and how he's played. He only has six points, but he's done some really, really good things on the defensive end. Uh, Trap a little bit too strong in that pass. So good hand from the Little John crowd as Lyles Davis, a guy who's been in the program for a while as a walk-on, checks in. And boy, comes in with 4.47 to go, so he's going to get a lot of minutes in a reserve role. Old Jai out high and gives to McMillan. He can't get the roll and Donnell deflecting the rebound. And head to Davis. Feeding Sims and a throwdown. Boy, a great find by Lyles Davis. Gets the assist and Amir Sims finishing with a big time flush. That left tender off the bounce. Lead back out to 34. Old Jai working inside on Donnell. Little fadeaway force job that time by Ashley Williams in the role for him. Ashley Williams just checking in. Of course, you're going to hear the folks now wanting Davis to take a shot. <laughs> I'm sure they'll run a play for him. Or hey, maybe he'll do it all too. himself inside. No, Donnell the rebound. Knocked away there. And McMillan ahead to Halverson. Halverson lost the handle. Sims. Spencer. Oliver from the corner and he drains the tray. A.J. Oliver gets that one to fall. He's been a little bit cold in the preseason games. That might get him going. He can shoot it, though. Yeah, good, real good shooter out of that Daniel High program. Tigers lead is 35. Look at that. Donnell on the hard pass by Oljai. Just takes it away. Another turnover by Western Carolina. Sloppy pass that time, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by McMillan. Clemson cruising to an opening win, up by 35 here at Little John. Tigers are up by 22 at the break. They've grown the lead out to 35, and still just over three to go. Lyles Davis, the walk-on, checked in moments ago. Every time he touches the ball, folks are going to want to shoot it. There's Malik Williams. He's shown some moves. He Tiger has. freshman. In his playing time here tonight, Clemson about to go 12-0 all-time against Western Carolina. First time these teams have played since November of 2010. And if you take the back way, it's uh, only about 70 miles from here to Cullowee. And that one's going to go down for Ashley Williams, who came on late in this game but has five points to show for it. through the legs of William, but there's Spencer with an open three. Not going to happen. Old Jai has the rebound. Devontae Fuller just checked in. Ball is thrown away by Western. Spencer goes to the hole. Early in the game, they might have called that a foul, but at this point, they're just going to let him play. Oh, they let him walk. Oh, they called a travel, but the dead ball does allow. Tigers check in another walk-on. Isaac Fields, remember his older brother Carson was a walk-on in this program, eventually earned a scholarship, and Isaac Fields able to check in. So all the Tigers in uniform able to get into the game here tonight. And Western Carolina able to do the same. Old Jai underneath able to spin to lose the defense of William, and sophomore out of Turkey able to finish down low. Davis and Sims. You really like the length of Sims. He drives across little running hook. No, but there's William on the rebound. Oliver for Fields. Oliver shoots the basket. Coming up on one to play. 
Ooh, a little crossover by Fuller inside, and in traffic is fouled. You know, Miles Davis got into the game and within moments had his first assist of the year. And look at the beautiful finish by Amir Sims. Great job running the floor by Sims, and uh, Davis threaded the needle with that left-handed pass. Looked good. Miles Davis, recipient of the first Clemson Man of the Month Challenge winner, they're doing within the basketball team, in which they each day the position coach grades a player twice a week, the academic counselor assesses the player and in every weight session the player is also graded miles davis a junior walk-on for the tigers at a james island charter in the charleston area first recipient of the award for punson man of the month and the man of the month's challenge and a neat thing brad brownell and his staff are doing davis trying to get on the box score points wise camp but there's a fadeaway by william nothing doing there and they'll go the other way Davis is one of the most respected young men on this basketball team. Fuller pulls up. And the rebound by Oliver. I bet you they try to run a play through the fields or Davis, probably Davis. And Weston extending the defense that time. They've heard the legend of Lyles Davis. Here's a little turnaround by William No. On the run out, it's Williams. All the way to the hole, no. Fuller the follow, no. A little put back up and in, though. And that'll go for Marcus Thomas. Another one of the freshmen for Larry Hunter. Tiger is going to hold on and go on to the victory. 85-57 to here in Little John Coliseum to start out the 2017-18 and campaign at 1-0. Brad Brownell getting win number 125 at the helm of the Clemson Tigers with the win tonight. A Clemson team that used that putback by Eli Thomas, some stout defense, and some good work from long range to pull away to a big lead at halftime and roll on from there. I was worried about the balance of this basketball team for Clemson. I was worried about the depth. But they had some questions for me tonight. I, I'm really, really pleased with the way they played. For Jim Davis, Pete Yannity saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>